Hey guys, welcome back to the Mago YouTube channel. As you may or may not know, I've been a um, big supporter of um, HID, so HPS and ceramic metal halide over the years. And I always thought that there's a, a place, a time and a place for uh, HPS. And that, you know, for example, if um, you're in a cold climate and you need um, additional heat into your grow room, or if you're um, not growing for long periods of time uh, continually, or indeed if you're just cash strapped and don't have the money to uh, to fork out on, on the higher end or higher efficiency LEDs, and HID is a great solution and uh, still has its place. Starting now though to wonder about um, about that position really, um, you know, notwithstanding that I'm sure I'm going to get the comments that. You know, commercial growers are still using HPS. Yes, that's true. Again, they've got lower electricity and power costs generally, and they're more concerned about capital upfront costs, and probably have less of a concern about their plant stretching, given the uh, facilities that they have. But when it comes to the home grower, the, um, the arguments for HID now uh, are getting a little bit um, stretched. <laughs> You don't mind me using the pun um, and I just wanted to run through them with you it is a debate it's not a simple uh, you know one answer fits all but I thought I'd just go through the the pluses and minus and uh, yeah it's particularly give you an update for you know the cost of high efficiency LEDs these days and give you that direct comparison and I've used our own LEDs, my grow, um, which I think is fair enough given it's my channel. <laughs> um, but as you'll see in previous videos, um, I've done lots of comparisons across different LEDs and they're very much in a similar ballpark. Um, the higher efficiency LEDs in terms of the cost per watt to purchase and also the uh, total cost over the three year period that I'm going to compare here. Next thing I'm supposed to point out is that when I'm doing the cost comparison, it's on the basis of um, trying to compare apples and oranges, really. They're two very different things, the LEDs and the HPS, but also be able to compare across, you know, ceramic metal halide and metal halide and metal halide and HPS combinations, which is all pretty complex and difficult. So what I've done is to show you the running cost to provide or deliver, I should say, 750 micromoles of power to the grow canopy. And I've done this by testing all these systems and understanding what, how many um, micromoles, or how much power each of these fixtures delivers, and then calculating how many fixtures it would be required, would be required to deliver that 750 micromoles and how much energy that's going to cost over a three year period to try and give you a reasonable comparison between them. And I've done that on the basis of 14 hours per day uh, at um, 17 cent per kilowatt hour cost. And I've done it using dollar prices for equipment, which is, um, you know, excludes taxes and shipping to try and keep it reasonably level are comparable and I've also done it uh, with um, using and this is arguable again so I've used probably the best value uh, HID equipment and um, so not using exorbitant prices or for very expensive elaborate fixtures but I've also included for the highest efficiency available with those fixtures so for example with the uh, HPS 1.3 usable PPF per watt is a very high efficiency and requires a high-end digital ballast, uh, a decent bulb and a good reflector. And I put in, you know, $200 for that, which you could, which, you know, I've heard arguments before that I'm using cheap equipment to compare. I'm not, that's, 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 that, that's a high efficiency system, but I'm also putting in a low price to give it the best possible opportunity. So I don't think it's rigged. Um, 
I'm sure I'll get uh, opinions uh, to the contrary, but uh, I believe I've been fair and honest um, in the uh, in the numbers I put in here. So let's look at the first one, which I'm going to compare, which is the first one to go to, which is Spectrum. And again, this is not being as reasonable as possible. And the only thing I'm really going to look at when I'm looking at Spectrum is not how much blue or green or whether infrared or UV or any of those other things involved. HPS does not emit UV. It doesn't get through the glass and the bulbs, nor does CMH, uh, nor does metal halide. There's very small amounts of UVA, but no UVB. Um, and UVA is, that range of UVA is basically a deep blue and just acts like blue. A big problem with uh, HPS is that it doesn't have enough blue for short dense growth. It's only got about 3%. And you need about six or seven percent minimum blue in order to get short dense growth. Again, commercial growers might be able to do without it. For the home grower growing in a tent, you don't want stretchy plants, uh, particularly if you're dealing with sativas. So HPS has a weakness there, and that's why for many years people have been using metal halide for the veg stage to keep the, the um, growth dense. Problem with metal halide is got it's got low efficiency. Uh, we'll get to that later. Anyway. Uh, there's a big argument that LED is the best solution from a spectrum point of view because you don't have to switch bulbs and you have the right an optimized spectrum in terms of uh, photosynthetic efficiency so that they've got it's got enough blue to keep dense short growth but it also and balance or trade-off has as much red as possible for high photosynthetic efficiency, because red is more photosynthetically efficient. And then it has the filler of green, so that we get nice white light that we can see what we're doing, instead of a very bluey light, or a very orangey light with HPS. Ceramic metal halide, of course, has an excellent spectrum and is comparable to LED. It doesn't add anything that LED um, doesn't have, for example. So CMH does not give you anything that LED does not give you. They're very similar spectrum, which is why people love the CMH so much. And from a spectrum point of view, LEDs win out. Um, and uh, I would struggle to see anybody's argument to the contrary, to be honest. I think they'd be stretching <laughs> again, stretching credulity to say that uh, HPS is better. So the next thing is um, with regard to uh, cost. And cost really is down to efficiency and fixture cost. So obviously per watt for a large wattage fixture, um, HPS, metal halide, etc., are a lot cheaper um, in terms of the upfront cost. Uh, and I put in, as I said, $200 for a 600 watt HPS. You could spend up to $500 for the same fixture. Um, and if you look at the comparable LED fixture, here I put in the MIGO, um, take the MIGO array, array 8 plus red, it's 480 watts, it's 645 euros, but it's delivering considerable more, 30% more power output. So you're spending $200 on a 600 watt HPS. And the, the closest equivalent I have here in terms of MIGO is the array 8 plus red, which is 645 euros, dollars, sorry. Um, however, it's outputting over uh, one third more power. So in, a, in essence, it only takes 60% or two thirds of an Array 8 fixture to match HPS for power output. Um, so that closes the gap straight away. Now when we're doing this comparison, this three year total cost comparison, I've taken that into account by, as I said before, um, costing it on the basis of delivering 750 micromoles. So you're going to need slightly less than one HPS fixture to deliver that because that delivers 819 PPF output. Uh, you're going to need slightly more metal halide, 586. So I think 750 is somewhere in the middle. It's about a, a combined value for your metal halide and HPS together. But when you compare that against the Array 8 plus red, um, you're getting about 30% extra power. So you only need to cost 
for about 75% of that fixture cost to deliver 750 microvolts. So then you look at the amount of power, and again, you're going to only need uh, essentially to be running 75% 480 watts for that period to deliver 750 micromoles. So the, uh, um, the total electricity cost for running these fixtures is significantly higher. Look, it's nearly uh, as twice as much uh, for the HPS over um, this three year period. And so when you add the fixture cost and the electricity cost together over that three year period, it's significantly cheaper to run the LEDs, including the fixture cost, to run the LEDs over that period. Um, and after that, of course, you're saving money. And that does not include bulb replacement, which I haven't included in there. So you'd be an extra few hundred uh, dollars. What would you need? Two to three, two, at least two bulb replacements, maybe three. Um, and that would be your uh, metal halide and HPS. So it'd be another couple of hundred dollars out for that. Um, so to my mind, I haven't included that by the way in those figures. So to my mind, to get a payback of probably about two years, um, like for like, when you add in all the running costs and everything else, is a very good investment. And after that, of course, you're saving money. Next thing, of course, is that you know, from a, if you are limited by heat, so if you're in a country which has, you know, moderate summer temperatures and you struggle with keeping those temperatures down, um, you are able to um, achieve the same power output with less wattage. And that means improved heat output. So you're reducing your heat by half for the same power output. And that means that you can either, uh, you know, grow through the summer where you couldn't do before, uh, less stress in your plants, higher yield, um, or you can squeeze more lighting into the same space and improve the yield from your grow space. Um, and quite a lot of customers are doing that now. So they're replacing 600 watt HPS, not with the same fixture as in power output, but say with the Array 8 or, or the Array Pro. And they're getting two things. They're getting increased yield because the increased power should be about a third increase in that case, 30%. That's a lot of money in the pocket. Uh, you're saving electricity at the same time. And it's allowing you to go to, through um, hot weather and uh, reducing the stress and improving the health of your plants. So. I get a lot of positive feedback by people who switched over. Um, there are some that will argue that HPS, doggedly that HPS is better for some other reasons. Um, and some of that is legitimate in terms of heat and heat output and keeping the grow room at a decent temperature. But um, remember, all you need to do is temperature control your fans if you're reducing the heat put into the space. and. Uh, you can still keep your temperatures up. You don't need to be barreling air through as fast as people traditionally do it with HPS. So, you know, there's a, there's a counter argument for nearly everything. And uh, hopefully in this forum, in this video, and in the comments below, we can exchange ideas in a, in a reasonable way and uh, understand each other's position, whether on the LED side or HPS side. Um, as we usually do in fairness on this channel. So uh, yeah, I look forward to the debates anyway. Take care.